Um, alright, all I'm saying is this, you know, I want to deliver some shit, and I want to deliver it in a way that is fucking, uh, in the, in the epicenter of, of how I deliver things, which is perfect and truthful and radical and in your face, so far in your face, it grabs your teeth, it shoves them down your freaking throat, and you're like, oh, what a lovely little snack. Wow, it tastes like my teeth, but I don't care, because Sheen delivered it. EU officials are set to lift restrictions on some food products from Fukushima that have been in place following the 2011 nuclear accident. Go fuck yourself is the perfect everything. We are on a fucking tsunami. We are on a tsunami and didn't make the rules. Lonely up here, but I sure like the fucking view. The EU requires mandatory radiation checks on food imports from Fukushima and surrounding prefectures. But the European Commission says it will ease that rule for goods if radiation levels have been within safe limits for a certain period of time. It says it will allow Fukushima vegetables, beef, and other meat products all fruit except persimmon, buckwheat, and tea. The change is likely to take effect on Saturday. The Japanese government will urge the EU to lift the rule for all remaining products. It is what it is. It is what it is. What it was isn't what you thought it is because it is what it is because you claim so, because you confirm it, because you insist that it is what it is and therefore it ain't what it ain't. It ain't what it ain't, which is gold and winning in magic because that's how I roll. Um, and it is what it is, in your stupid, boring, contaminated world, because you allowed it. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is promising citizens the greatest possible benefit from one of the biggest ever trade deals. He tried to persuade lawmakers to accept his economic forecasts for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. I don't buy it. I don't agree with it. I don't trust it. I don't care about it. I don't ever want to hear those words put together again. Communist Party member Satoshi Inoue picked holes in the government's calculations. He questioned an estimate that the TPP will boost Japan's GDP by $115 billion. He said the deal will actually hurt people's livelihoods and urged the government to pull out. The government overestimates the economic benefit and underestimates the harm to the agricultural sector. It's brushing off public criticism of the deal as a way to win the upper house election. I will not allow that. Prime Minister Abe denied those assertions. He said the TPP will encourage free and fair competition and create businesses. Our estimates are based on a thorough examination of individual agricultural and marine products. We'll take all possible policy measures to get the maximum economic benefit. Twelve countries, including Japan and the U.S., reached a broad agreement on the TPP last year. Governments are preparing to sign next month. Japanese leaders then plan to get approval from lawmakers. They'll also submit bills on ways to help farmers deal with the impact. When I say earn yourself, I'm talking about, you know, you already own yourself, not earn yourself. Be about something. Be about something that matters. Get inside the truth. Get inside the truth every single fucking moment and you're going to win. Japan will use virtual reality system to dismantle Fukushima nuclear plant. From Tokyo, Japan will use a virtual reality system to help technicians to dismantle the troubled Fukushima nuclear plant, Asahi Daily reported in its online edition Friday. The system is located at the Naraha Remote Technology Development Center, 12 kilometers, or 7.5 miles from the plant and has a 3.6 meter or 12 feet high screen, which simulates 3D images of the inside of the reactor that was struck by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. These buildings are currently inaccessible to the workers due to the presence of high levels of radiation. In November 2015, levels were so high in spots, the radiation was strong enough to kill a person in under an hour. The center also contains a replica of the containment vessel of a reactor, which it plans to use to test and investigate methods and technologies for dismantling. One of the most complicated parts of the entire process is the extraction and safe storage of the melted and solidified fuel that accumulates in reactors 1, 2, and 3 of the nuclear plant. Remember, TEPCO claims it still does not know the condition of the melted cores and is unable to locate them. They may still be liquid-consuming, atomizing, and aerosolizing everything it comes in contact with. Before the fuel is removed, the reactors need to be decontaminated and those sections where the water to cool them is filtered has to be repaired. Good luck with that. However, the radiation levels are so high that for the time being authorities have only been able to use remote control devices, such as robots, to access the damaged units. Robots have failed due to high radiation.
The Japan Atomic Energy Agency, the agency in charge of the project, hopes this technology will help improve efficiency and safety of the tedious process of dismantling the center, which is estimated to take between 30 to 40 years. However, that estimate depends on technology yet to be invented. See, the only way you win is inside the truth. You get outside the truth and where are you? You're living in the middle. You're living in the middle and that's where you get slaughtered. Ball field, battlefield, it doesn't matter. You get slaughtered in the middle because in the middle are the fucking sheep. What do you want? <laughs> On shore. News Channel 5 meteorologist Steve Fandero joins us now with why experts say that's bad news. Steve? Yeah, it's actually quite scary. According to the NOAA fisheries, of the, since this past June, there has been a record amount of over 3,000 strandings of sea lions and sea pups. But that was because of the unusual warm blob of water in the Pacific. When do you want it? Now, with a strong El Nino year ahead, that just means trouble. <laughs> These sea lions adopted by Sleuths, a nonprofit organization out of the Moss Landing Marine Labs, are deemed as failure to thrive. They come in emaciated, the stranding centers um, nurse them back to health and fatten them up and let them back go. And normally if environmental conditions are okay, then they may be able to continue. But what's happening right now is that the environmental conditions haven't improved. All because of El Nino. Who's your daddy? <laughs> If you combine another warm water phenomenon in the El Nino with that, that could be a catastrophic effect in terms of the food chain and, and the availability of resources for animals. What about your mom? <laughs> Scientists are on edge about the unusually warmer waters in the Pacific being influenced by this El Nino winter because that influence is really amping up stranded marine animals. How do you want it? We're seeing a, a stranding um, level that's 10 times the norm of what we'd see in a normal year. So this is a very severe incident. These warmer waters are making it extremely difficult for sea lions to find food. The effects of these warm water events is to drive uh, nutrient upwelling offshore. And what that means is that there's less fish available for animals. NOAA agencies monitor the sea lions' conditions to predict how they'll be affected in the upcoming months. And, and they can predict with a great deal of precision what's going to happen based on the birth, birth weights of these animals, you know, what's the birth rate within the population, that type of thing. And all the indicators, unfortunately, are negative. Experts say that within the next month or so, an even bigger spike in sea lion strandings is expected. Back to you. You heard all that, right? No, I didn't hear fuck all because I'm using a piece of plastic designed by trolls covered in lights and buttons. Obviously a weapon, but I will turn it against them. In Japan, lawmakers will vote on a resolution that strongly protests North Korea's nuclear tests and demands the country abandon all nuclear devices. The governing and opposition parties compiled the draft resolution, which says as the only country to have suffered nuclear attacks, Japan finds it totally unacceptable. And it calls the test a serious challenge to global nuclear nonproliferation. Japan's defense minister has joined those around the world who are questioning North Korea's claims. Gen Nakatani says a hydrogen bomb is more powerful than an atomic bomb and would generate larger seismic waves when detonated. The scale of the tremor was little different from the country's three past nuclear tests, so it's hard to conclude that the explosion was a normal hydrogen bomb test. But Nakatani says Pyongyang's nuclear technology is believed to have reached a fairly advanced level. He says North Korea could have intentionally downsized the blast. Nakatani hasn't ruled out the possibility that Pyongyang may launch ballistic missiles or engage in other provocative acts in reaction to the international criticism. As global concerns erupted over the news of North Korea's nuclear test, in Japan it caused worry for another reason, worry over the fate of loved ones abducted long ago. NHK World's Takahumi Terui has more. The families of abductees have been waiting patiently for word from North Korea, but they were upset with the news. It's been a long time since we started calling for the return of our family members. But still, North Korea continues nuclear experiments. They break their promise over and over. They always lie to us. Sakie's daughter, Megumi, was on her way back home from school 
when she went missing in 1977. The last time Megumi saw her mother, she was 13 years old. Megumi was not an isolated case. The government says at least 17 Japanese citizens were abducted by North Korean agents in the 70s and 80s. After years of denial, then leader Kim Jong il finally admitted to kidnapping Megumi and others in 2002. Since then, only five have been allowed to return to Japan. Others, including Megumi, are still unaccounted for. According to North Korean officials, they have either died or were never kidnapped to begin with. But Japanese investigators do not believe them. The Japanese government has long called for the North to reopen its investigation into the fate of the abductees. In 2014, Pyongyang promised to conduct a full scale investigation. Tokyo, in return, partially lifted economic sanctions against the country. The North's official said the probe would take about a year. Since that pledge, no progress has been made. Families of the abductees say time is running out. They worry their aging relatives may not live long enough to see a reunion. They are now calling for tougher sanctions by the Japanese government. We have to make the North understand that they will be in serious trouble. Unless they return the abductees. We need to force them to make that decision. The nuclear test shows once again that North Korea is an unpredictable and reclusive state, one that is becoming even more difficult to negotiate with. The families, though, have a simple request. They just want to see their loved ones again. Japanese government officials have decided not to seek approval of a nuclear power pact with India at the current Diet session. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe visited India last month and came back with a principal agreement. But the parliament needs to approve the deal first in order to move ahead. And a senior foreign ministry official says the content of the pact needs to be clear enough to get through an expected rigorous debate at the Diet. Arguments may include India's nuclear tests in the Past and its current state of not being a signatory to the Nuclear Non Proliferation Treaty. Other government officials suggest that they don't want to move ahead too quickly with the deal before an upper house election this summer. Ooh, I can do it like Conan or Jay or Boring. I'm just not like that. I'm just not like that. I'll never be like that. And um, pretty much, I get. This is my message to you.